My name is Nina Rajrani, and these are my two of my students who have done their arangetrams. This is Seema Soda, and this is Bhakti Rawal. I have a school based here at the Harrow Art Centre, which has been in existence since 1991, so that's almost two decades now. And um, Seema and Bhakti have been learning with me for many years. I, I think they, they will come to it as to how long they've been learning with me. Um, my own background is that I had my own training in Bharatanatyam in London at the Bhavan Centre and I had my Arangetram here in, in London under my first guru, Prakash Yadugudde. And that goes a long time back, that's 1987. So for me it's actually a very huge achievement that I was able to do my foundation training here in England um, and that after some further training in India, I came back to England and I set up my own school in 1991 and I've been able to train students to Arangetram level and beyond. So I've, I thought Seema and Bhakti were a good example to, um, to demonstrate what I have achieved through my teaching practices because um, they have both achieved very high standards in, in their dancing. And Bhakti has gone on to um, perform in my, my, my touring company as well as a professional dancer. Seema's having a break, which she keeps saying she's coming back from. <laughs> yes. So, back yes, year. because she's in Liverpool now for, um, for her university education. And she's promised me she's coming back to dancing in, in, in July. July. Yes. yes. So maybe, I think, they can probably speak about... I mean, my own experience as a, as a student here in this country, um, my teacher was very, very soft, very kind. And <laughs> I'm everything opposite to him, <laughs> if I may say so myself. He was... Um, but the one thing that I think that I share with him is, I, I, ho I hope my students would agree with me, um, he's a very, very giving teacher. Because I know that people have... Um, experiences with gurus who have been a bit um, stingy with sharing all the material, everything that they know. And I can, I can wholeheartedly say that my teacher has taught me everything that he, know, he, he, he knows. And when it came to a point where he felt that I could be pushed further but he wasn't the right person for it, he put me in touch with the right person to go to and I went for further training to India um, to learn with the Dhananjans. Um but apart from that, I also had some training with Chitra Vishweshwar and when she would come from India to England, she had quite a close um, association with the Bhavan Centre. So she would come and then she would... M my guru was actually training under her, but because I used to perform with him um, as, his, as, his, as his partner, he and I would train under Chitra Vishweshwar together. So I had, a, I had a wonderful experience there of training with my guru under another guru. Um, and then, like I said, he, he guided me to go to India and to take further training with the Dhananjans. And it's when I came back from, from that intensive two years, I set up my own school. And then a year later, I set up my own touring company. And after that, I did go to India quite regularly, um, every year, at least once a year. And kept that up for quite a long time until it became impossible because I had um, sort of... Um, children of my own <laughs> that prevented me from going and <laughs> just doing whatever I wanted to do. Um, so as a teacher, I've had, um, sorry, as a student, I've had very, very positive experiences, very kind teachers, very, very giving teachers, um, but they weren't as strict as me. But I think that's because I was a good student and I listened and I did my practice and I didn't have to be told I would come back doing more than what I was supposed to do. Um, but I have to bully my students quite a lot <laughs> to do what I, I want them to do. So maybe Seema can start. <laughs> Seema was a fat, chubby child when she started at my school who had difficulty in just moving, let alone dance. But she was so amazing, so beautiful on her Arangetram. It's, it, you know, when I think of that journey from the time she came to me as a total misfit. <laughs> And to what she became later on, I mean, I think you'll have photographs from her. She was just gorgeous. She really, really was. So Seema, you can talk about your wonderful experience now. Transformation time. 
Saturday morning, waking <laughs> up at eight o'clock, being told you're going to dance school. Painful for a child. Yeah. <laughs> and I came not knowing what I was doing, what I was learning. But my mum was like, it's fantastic. I wanted to do it all my life. You'll love it. And I came to dance class and I saw this wonderful lady in front of me with a duck of gray and a stick. <laughs> it was a scary sight. But I've got to admit, I did enjoy it from like the first month onwards. Like it took me a while getting into this whole waking up, training. It was like a little regime that you get into. You know what's expected. And Diddy was strict. But bullying is not the right word. She never bullied me, but she <laughs> put me in my place when I used to like to wander off into my own little world. I'd stand there and I'd be like, Diddy's talking and I'd be there playing with my sari looking out the window, what's going on, and she'd be like, Sima, and I'd be like... Yeah, but you were a good child compared to her. <laughs> I was always better than that. You were a good child. You were a good child comparatively. I just didn't like you. <laughs> okay, we'll let's, get let's to come me. to her later, you carry on saying that. No, but, um, Diddy, it was difficult because we used to be, I was taught by Diddy herself, and then I was taught by another student, Wrinkle Diddy, Mm. She used to take classes as well, so we'd see Diddy being really strict and then we'd see a little bit of a softer version with, with the one of Diddy's students who would then take our classes as well. And I always found it difficult because I didn't know what was the right way. You'd always, when you're a kid and you're growing up, you're thinking, do I stick to the strict way or do I go haywire and go a little bit easy? But when I saw Diddy perform one of her pieces, which she was touring, I think it was with... The, the Kathak? Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she, um, I went to see this performance and I was gobsmacked. I was like, that is something I want to achieve. And then it was a Friday night performance and the next morning I was up at seven I was like, Mum, 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 I've got to go to dance class, I've got to go. And she was like, what happened? And I was like, I saw Diddy dance last night. <laughs> and ever since then it was always my dream to be able to dance like Diddy. And she'd give us these little tests, she'd give us theory, She'd give us practical stuff, she'd give us the music knowledge, and I'd be there and I'd put them all in my plastic folders and I'd, I have this big fat file at home and it'll be grade one, everything goes past, and you learn it off by heart. And I'd go in and I'd be like, she'd ask questions, she'd be like, Diddy, over here, Diddy. And she'd always just look at me, she, because she knew I knew the answer, she'd go to other people and I'd be like, it's not fair, it's not fair. And then I thought, I can, I've danced better, I've improved. So, I didn't ask, I got my brother to ask if I can move a grade up. And Dizzy was like, no, she, she, she's not there yet. She, she needs to build a bit more. And like, I was a little bit disappointed in hearing that because I thought I put my effort into it. And I was like, no, you know what? Dizzy knows best. She's gone through all this training and she's, she's going to tell me when I've achieved it. And that one time that she was talking to my mum and she goes, I think I was ready for her. I get the, I was gobsmacked. I, I still remember that. We were sitting in the Harrow Arts Centre bar. By the way, it's Arangate Trum. Arangate Trum. Part of the training, you have to say the word correctly. Arangate Trum. Yes. Arangate Trum. Yes. Yeah, and we were sitting in this bar and she said it and I was just like, this is a dream. It's not coming true. It's a dream. And that year, in the student showcase, she put me in every dance possible. <laughs> I remember I did, we did an opening piece and then I had a break to get a costume change. And then there were another three pieces I did, then there was the interval, and then there was the big student showcase of the Dance Mahabharata. Drama. Dance drama, yeah. Dance drama. And then that, after I did that, I was like, I know I can do it. And I appreciated all the, the tellings off I got, all the pushes that I got, all the, the little comments about my fatness I got, because <laughs> I realised it was holding me back. Like, you've got to realise, to get stuck somewhere, you've got to lose something, and I lost my chubbiness. <laughs> <laughs> and even now, like when Lizzie see, sees me, she'll be like, you, you put on a tiny bit, you might just have to lose it a little bit, but you never take it to heart anymore because you know she's saying it's very good. I didn't let you have chocolates today. I know. Mm. It's disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but overall, diddy has been a good teacher, and I went to India with her, and I saw her training for her tour, mm. and I've never, ha like, Diddy's never put me through so much pressure that she goes through herself as a dancer, but yet we still get the best from her. 
Like she understands that over here we've got school, we've got exams, so she doesn't bombard you with, oh, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. She she lets you understand that, okay, it's important, but so is your other life, and she's willing to take measures that we can still have your life. She doesn't take things away. Well, she hasn't from me. She's got it easy. I know. You Do you not know this woman? <laughs> I, I do. I know Vivian very well. I'm on my lunch break. But, <laughs> Extended. But, 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 but I was a better student than you. Uh, no, I wasn't uh, rebellious. Like uh, who's still carrying on dancing? Me. I went to uni. I'm so coming back. I'm so do lots of people dance. and they come back every weekend. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, in terms of the r and from training itself, do you want to say anything about that? It was intense. 13 months every day, 6 hours a day. Busy. Before school, after I'm so school. Sorry for you. <laughs> During my GCSEs as well, I'd, we'd arrange times between my exams, my revision. I lived with the day. Yeah, she lived, yeah. I mean, they both like literally lived with me. I used to, we, she And they both been on trips with me to India. India. Uh, that's, you know, it's a very, it's a really close bond I think you form. Not, I'm not, not exclusively because of the Arangetum training, because I have that special bond with other students as well, um, who haven't been able to do the Arangetum, but I think there, there, there comes a point at, at which, you know, if, if a student carries on with you for so many years, it's, it's, it becomes a bit, it, it's like, it, it's like family. I mean, they've both literally like lived in my house, okay. seen me in my... <laughs> Nighty. Yeah. And her mother, who looks totally different to her, <laughs> behaves totally different to her, very sweet lady. She came with Bhakti, and Bhakti was like, you know, the typical teenager, rolling her eyes type of person, attitude. I looked at her and I thought, this girl will not last one day with me. We're going to have such terrible clashes. So I kind of ignored her quite a lot in the beginning because I just thought, you know, she's just here for a little while. And then I think you can take it from there. Right. Um, so I started that day when my mother took me to Nina Padi's class. I didn't want to be there because it was... We used to go to um, a family class before, um, and I really used to like it because um, I had lots of friends and families, like my cousins were there, and because the distance got too much, um, my mum found Nina Padi and she like, forced me to go. And the first day I was, I remember, I I, used, I knew Seema from a very young age before. We used to live around the corner from each other and just wave to each other randomly as we used to go to school and that's how we became friends. And I saw her and I was like, thank God there's somebody I know. And everyone was, I remember they were, you were doing nellies and they were just walking and I was just like, how boring, you call this dancing, you're walking from one end of the room to another. And I was like, Mommy, I hate it. And she was like, just go, see how it is. You know, she's really good. I've you know, done a lot of research about her. She's done this. I was like, I don't care. She's not, you know, my old teacher. I was like, none of my cousins here. And then she really, like, encouraged me to go. And I used to think of every excuse in the morning on a Saturday. Like, I'd turn up maybe, like, a bit late or whatever. I just didn't like it. I didn't care that I'd be late. Like, I would, I was, I was the one that, you know, teachers would be like, can you sit more, please? No. I was really, I feel really bad. Like, I would argue back. I just hated actually being there. And then it got to a point where my mum just gave up on me. And um, she was like, okay, you want to like, you know, you don't want to dance? Then don't dance, it's fine. So during, I used my, G like, I think it was GCSEs, I used my GCSEs as an excuse to quit. And I think that was probably, at that point, Didi's happiest day. <laughs> she was like, finally, she's gone. <laughs> took her so long. <laughs> what took her so long? <laughs> and um, it was also like, I think I wasn't used to the discipline because it, I went to a school um, where it was all family and friends. It was really laid back and it was just... Very informal. Yeah, very informal. There was no structure. It would be like we would learn dance-wise, we would learn something from grade one and then all of a sudden learn, learn like a Dilana. And I didn't know these things had a name, I just knew them as dances. So when like Didi was asking me so she could decide what grade to put me in, do you know what an Alaripur is? Uh, no. Like, I, did, I really didn't know. And I think it was that day you were just like, okay, like I could just tell with the look on your face, she was like, I don't like this girl at all. But um, like, and then when I saw the older girls do it, because I'd already learned it, I was like, oh, I know this. But I just, I think 
I was glad that even though I was with like girls that were younger than me, that was another thing that really put me off because I was I think 13 and everybody else was like six. So I was like, you know, double their age and I was like, I'm going to this baby group, how embarrassing. And, um, and also I was like growing up that teenage years as well, it's quite embarrassing for you to like, if, if we had school shows, I'd be with my grades, so I was like the oldest one with the six year olds kind of thing. I, I like really hated it. And then anyway, when I gave up, um, that was when Seema decided to do her Alan Gitram and I went Alan Gitram. Alan Gitram. I um I went to hers and that was just an eye opener because I was like, Whoa and also like there was just a point where I was like, Wow, like it just I don't even know what it was. It was just she was her performance like they said it was she was amazing. She just not only looked beautiful, but every dance that she did in the repertoire, she actually just fit the role, whether it was like a Krishna dance or whether it was whatever it was, like a pure dance to expression, to like everything. She just looked wow and I was just like, I wanna do that and then I was like, I don't I didn't have it in me. I didn't I really didn't think I could do that. And then um with it took a lot of courage because I didn't like my I didn't like the at all. I couldn't I wouldn't be able to do this at that point in my life. <laughs> and it took a lot of courage to actually go to the and ask her, can I do this? And um, I remember, the, like, I, after her, I, when I went to Diddy, I said, I'd like to come back to dance. And she was just like, yeah, okay. Like, she was, she was busy doing something as well. So she was like, yeah, okay. And I remember you must have thought, like, what a joke, yeah. And then um, she was like, yeah, that's fine. You can come back in the next term. So I went back. And then I thought, I want to do this more, like, on a daily basis. Because it was just so, I don't know why. Your performance was just really inspiring. So I said to her, I want to do this full time. And then Dizzy was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'd like to teach. I want to perform more. So Dizzy said to me, she was like, okay. Like, her face was like shocked. Are you sure? Like, I was like, no, no, I really want to do this. And then she was just like, okay, fine. Just come to class on Wednesday and you can shadow me and, you know, we'll take it from there. And it just, it felt like she was giving me really short answers. But I think it was because you just thought... I didn't think you were serious. Yeah. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Because she said, I want to... I want to do. Be, I want to become a professional dancer. I want to do this full time. And I said, "Are you are you being serious?" Because I know what it is. What what a big step it is to give up everything that you're doing and, and then to to decide you're going to be a full time dancer. And I thought it had it required a lot more guts than she had. Especially she hadn't shown any kind of commitment or liking to dance training, um, and certainly not towards me anyway. So. Um, the the thing was, I, I just felt that, I, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. And I said, okay, come to class. And I thought she won't come. But then she did. <laughs> and then she kept coming and kept coming. Kept coming and, you know. Yeah. And, and also we moved after as well. I just moved around the corner from you then. Yeah, that's she when we moved. Us, yeah. And it was literally like walking distance. It was two minutes walk. And but I still used to drive there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but yeah, then like I started to do it and I ended up like just living at your house after because I just ran around the I had my own keys. <laughs> and um, it was really nice. Like I started to form a bond and then I started to think to myself, I was like, this lady is knowledge. Just she's just the book of knowledge. She's not she's she's not human. There's something not she's right about her. Genius when it comes it's, to dance. It's not even just dance though. And and then it was like I started, she, she just taught me like a way of life that maybe like, as in like, my mum has probably said the same thing to me, but because it was, first of all, somebody I didn't like, I was just like, I used to always think that, like, she's quite harsh, you were really harsh on me as well, I felt, but then I'm really glad because I don't think I would have been at this stage, it was like, the first, I would say, the first few months, it was a nightmare. It was just like, I'm telling you, I want to be here. Do you like not believe me? Why are you torturing me for? And um, it was this. She'd give me a challenge, and then I'm quite. I love challenges. It was. I I love, like, if you give me a task to do, and I I I just like to get on with things. So um, she'd tell me to do something, and I'd do it, and I'd be like, right next, and then she'd give me something a lot harder, and I'd be like, okay, done, done, done. And I think it was then, after a few months, you realise, okay. Okay, she's not going anywhere. <laughs> I need to do something with her. <laughs> and um, it was every time, like, you just the boundaries were just going higher and higher and higher. And um, 
it felt really good, but then it just, it was frustrating for me because I was just like, why am I, like, I'm not, like, does she not believe me or something? And then it was like, I want you to learn every dance in the school. And then when I used to teach, it was like, she'd ask me, like, pop quizzes, why don't you know this? And I was just, I'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, Brendan. But it was good, though. I mean, like, I feel there's a few students in the school that would be like, no, we've learned this stuff like this. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, people in the school know not to argue with me when it comes to, like, the school syllabus, the school steps. Because she's tra these trained me in such a way. It was, I'd get to her house at nine, then it would be just the normal, like, you know, she'd work with me or she'd be like, okay, I want you to learn this. And it was just, it was, it was informal at first as well. But it was because Divi had so much faith in us as well. She knew that we would do it. Like, we'd go to her house and she'd be like, okay, warm up, go through this do some of your theory, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you on this. And she could leave us to it knowing that we would do it. Yeah. We wouldn't abuse the trust that she'd given us. We'd sit there and we'd... Well, I used to watch <laughs> the warm-up. I hated the warm-up, that was the worst thing. But I'd do it and I'd go over things. And Lizzie would walk in and your back would go up because you'd think, okay, I've been doing it, I've got to impress her, I've got to show it to perfection. And you see it, and Lizzie would just sit there happily. She'd be quiet. And at the end of it, she'd be like, that wasn't right. Why did you do it like that? And it'd be like, but yes, but nothing. <laughs> you taught it like this, you do it like this. And it's like... I think that was the it. best thing, though. I think doing, especially, like, doing my... When it got to my own interim stage, I, like, wasn't expecting to do it at all because I'd skipped, like, about two grades all of a sudden um, because I was doing it full-time. And then when you asked me in the bar, before you asked me in when I asked it's a you, pattern. it's always going on in the bar. Yeah. I know. We have but to, yeah, you have to clarify this is a cafe bar. I don't <laughs> drink. <laughs> People will think it's like a bar bar. Oh no. It was a cafe it's bar. Bar. I've never had a drink in my life. I think, you know. And yeah. um, <laughs> then we were talking about this, and then you were like, Oh, I don't think you're ready. And I was just like, And then I remember saying, Well, I don't care whenever you think I'm ready, I want to be number seven, not number nine. Or like because they, they okay. were like the seventh one in the school or the ninth person in the school to do um, the graduation because they're like my lucky numbers and I thought if this is my career I want to have something lucky I'm a bit superstitious like that. She wanted to be student number seven in the school to do the Arangate room or student number, number nine. nine. Which one were you in there? Seven. seven. What was I? I don't know. I'm not into numerology. Yeah, I think am I? Five. I don't know. But um, no, so I... There was you. You asked mum, and we all, we came to your house, and we spoke about it. And it was it was quite training. I was quite lucky. I had you taught me all my dances. I was I was, I was quite glad, um, and it was really fun. And even like on the day of my hundred, I remember like so many like we had one one of the students, Kina. She used to um, come to the school before. She was the compare. And um, she came to um, one of my rehearsals during, like it was a couple of days before um, the show, and she was just like, "Did he so chilled out?" Like she's never, because every like usually apparently he gets a bit stressed out, like because there's so much to do. Stress, stress is well apparently, but like apparent, I I was so excited, like I, even on the day of my, I was jumping backstage. I, I couldn't wait. I forgot like things like when we did the puja, I forgot to like. Do pranam to the priest. I just ran off. It's like it's on my it's on my DVD as well. But I just ran off. It was just like that. I don't know what it was. I was just so excited. And I remember waking up the next day and phoning you, and I was like, I don't like this. It was it was such a horrible feeling because it, anti climax. Yeah. It's such a big build up, and then suddenly it's all over, and then you think. What am I doing with my yeah. life? But yeah. it was, I had like on the actual day, I was so chilled out. I went to a mass, I went for a massage in the morning. I went and got my nails done. And <laughs> I was panicking on the day of my It was so chilled out. It was like, I got, I got a manicure and a pedicure and I was just, I drove to my own show. But hey, that was fine. <laughs> Can't be too diva. And um, I just remember just, seeing my mum and you just running around like headless chickens. And it was it was quite funny because my mum's name's Hina. So it was like, Hina is this done, yes Nina, this is done, Hina, Nina, Hina, Nina. That's all you could hear. <laughs> yeah. And it was it was really I, I really enjoyed it. And I think from what I remember, I did not make a single mistake 
throughout from from this I don't, again, again. until the end where I fell flat. I was like um, in the Mangalam, she just falls on her bottom, sits on the stage, loses <laughs> balance, and I got up and I was like. <laughs> it was the end. I actually, I mean, I was so excited, and I couldn't believe that I didn't. And also to top it off, um, two weeks before I got into a car accident, I was in a neck brace. Yeah. And I remember you and Mum going, "Well, you have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it," because you'd called um the percussionist and the vena player from India. from India, and she was like, "The tickets are paid for. It's all been done. They're gonna come on the plane. You have to do it." And my mum was like, I've taken a loan out for this, you have to do it. <laughs> and I'm in a rope brace going, okay, <laughs> I couldn't move my neck. It was quite, but it was like, I think it was such a proud achievement. And also, um, before that, I remember um, I did my first duet. I did that whole, and that was when, like Seema, you put me in like every single dance in the July showcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, well, it's good training because you're going to do a full repertoire by yourself yeah. on the day of the Arangetram. So to get the experience of dancing lots of pieces in the show. Yeah. But it was like, I did, <laughs> but you made me do chemistry with Ash, I remember then. Yeah. And that was, we were choreographing it as well. So it was like from morning, nine o'clock, and we used to have the intensive week in the evening. It was like from nine in the morning till 10.30 at night, mm. non-stop. But I loved it. It was just so much fun. I miss those classes. Mm. I do. I think those were the best classes that we ever had when there was so much going on. Yeah. I, I, I think at, at the time of your Arling it was mad. It was mad well. because we were doing the place prize that year. So I was in full time company rehearsal. I had I had actually two companies that time because we were touring in Norway as well. So I had to put together two separate companies, one to do the place prize, yeah. one to tour in Norway. Her Arangetram. I had just broken, broken my collarbone bone that year, and I had I had to get back to performing after having three operations on my collarbone. So it was just absolute mayhem. But I think for me specifically, I work very well under stress. I actually do better work and achieve mm. more. And yeah, you got lucky because your Arangetram was in that time <laughs> in my stress most stressful time. But it was fun. It was it was just so much. We fun. choreographed. I mean, I choreographed. Mostly all your items new yeah. for her. Like crazy times, like one thirty in the morning, my husband and I would be in the kitchen because <laughs> if we if we rehearsed anywhere else in the in the house, it would the babies good. would wake up. And um, no, they were not babies; they were they were children that I wanted. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so they were. So we had to like rehearse, rehearse in the kitchen, in the kitchen. It was at so one thirty in the morning, choreographing these new pieces, and it was it was so much fun. It was like moving rooms. Like, yeah. they would have students coming in that were just about to start the school. When you had the Arangetams, we had three students three. doing Arangetams in that year. Yeah. So I had to do them in rotation, like, you know, from one room to the other, like, <laughs> living room to sitting room to the kitchen, and... Um, and babysitting kids in between, yeah. and yeah. having a music class, and going back to dance class, and maybe having... And one thing Dizzy always used to tell me, comb your hair. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I combed it today. Yeah. yeah, that was one thing. I invested in a comb that year. <laughs> that was one thing I learned because I had to. But we were always like, no matter where we were, Diddy like arranged it so we felt like we were in a, another dance studio. Whether it was carpet, whether it was lino, it was a dance studio we were working in. Yeah, and when they were yeah. resting, they were babysitting. Yeah, it yeah. was so much fun though. Or we were singing, yeah. singing. And me and Pukti used to go to. We used to go to see Diddy. We'd be like, oh, we're gonna have a relaxed evening, and we'd start talking. Diddy would be cooking. Some will be washing dishes, yeah. some will be trying to feed the kids. And this she has like, severe no, OCD. It's like this, you've like, got to do it like this. And she'd be giving these beats to us, and we'd be like, me and Pat would be looking at each other. <laughs> what, what are we talking about now? And they'd jump from one thing to the other, and we'd be like trying to run after See, I remember up. going for chilled out days at Diddy's house, oh. and it would be me sitting in. In, in our old house, there was just the, ta the table in the kitchen. I'd be sitting in the table. She'd be sitting there. Give her two minutes. She'll get up, get the cloth, and start wiping the platform and for no reason. Cleaning. And she <laughs> like cleanliness, but it would be and clean. Would be <laughs> like I said, severe OCD. <laughs> what OCD? Over cleanliness. Yeah, uh, obsessive cleanliness disorder. It's okay, Diddy. You yeah. still love it. <laughs> I think I also remember on that actual day of my um, I don't get some Kamara's violin caught on fire. Yeah, yeah. the violin is, yeah, yeah. And my chief guest, and me and the comparer backstage in the wings, 
and they were doing there was some musical interlude going on and we're going like signing fire and I remember my music teacher, um, Diddy's husband, she just going, he's like mouthing to me, best of luck, and me and my friend are going, fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, it was just, and we were trying to get, we were like, cool Diddy, cool Diddy, and then like, we were trying everything we could, and all we could see is like, smoke coming from his violin. It was like, I, I don't know what happened, one of the wires had a short circuit or something. And it just it was the electric violin, wasn't it? It was yeah, it was the electric violin. So uh, all you see is our chief, my chief guest, run on stage, put it out, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, thank God. It was it was quite funny, and everyone was like, what the heck happened? What the heck happened? But it was fun. My chief guest was Maven Koo, and we did the skate park performance that year. And Diddy gave me a challenge of going in ditches and on oh, I remember and that. There, posing. And I was like, what is this, Diddy? It was the most craziest thing I'd ever done. And Maven was choreographing that. Maven yeah. was choreographing it. And it was outdoor. And like, you know, you get like the little ramps that the skateboarders go on. And he'll be like, use your hands, crawl into it, pose. In a Baratonatium costume. And you're like, of course. <laughs> okay, you're trying to do it. And he's like, don't look so... <laughs> stressed or like because you're, you're scared you're like I don't know what I'm doing this is new to me and then he'd be like you're fine you're fine it's fine don't worry about it and he'd come and be like I'm not happy with your other Monday your positioning was bad and be like and you're coming to see my iron get room <laughs> and chief guest <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do I mean that puts the pressure on when you know who your chief guest is as well but it's just you've got to live up to expectations and on my iron get room I remember during my run on Maven Koo was at the edge of his seat and I could see him putting Dalim going like this and I was thinking, <laughs> okay, if I miss that beat, I'll screw this up. So let's look at him while I'm doing that. Because then he gave me musical training as well with the other Minji. And I'd have two hours after every dance class where I'd learn the music of my pieces and I'd learn to put it to Dalim. So when I saw Maven Koo in the front seat with this extravagant Dalim going on, <laughs> I was so grateful because I thought that was something that... I don't know whether a lot of the other students had the music training at that time while doing the Iron Getrum, so it was a plus point for me. I learned I could multitask while dancing. <laughs> it was you had challenge. come to Liverpool with us as well, isn't it, before your Iron Getrum? Yes, to the um, to this camp. choreographic lab thing we did with the exploratorium. I remember, because I remember you had your music classes in the kitchen there as well. <laughs> I, I'm living in that accommodation this year. Are you in Liverpool? Yes, that yeah. same accommodation lifted across. That brings back memories. Yeah, I used to, Vivi would be like cooking dinner for six of us, no, eight of us, mm -hmm. including you and Yadavanji. And there'd be Yadavanji sitting at the table, me sitting here, Vivi walking I'd be making out. Chinese stir fry, I remember. And we, I'd be uh. singing out of tune, and Vivi would be like, no, it's out of tune. And Yadavanji would be like, Mina, it's fine, we'll get you in tune. <laughs> and it just wouldn't work. I was like, this is not happening. My voice was the worst. My first singing teacher told you I was tone deaf, as Dizzy told me. <laughs> I think I still am. Mm. Have, have like we had enough? Yeah, you want to I'd stop? like to know a little bit more about the Hinduism and the Anglican and how, how you came to the terms that all developed that in your performance. <sighs> Gosh. Hinduism and the Anglican. Um. I tend not to have any kind of, in my teaching, I tend not to get religious because I'm not a, I'm not a, I am a, I am a religious person in the sense I am a, I'm God-fearing, but I'm not religious as in, I'm, I don't, I'm not ritualistic and a lot of hin, Hindu practices are very ritualistic. I believe that there's God, now, this is my personal religious belief, I believe there's God but I believe more in it being in the nature around us as in the five elements and even in terms of, in, within Hinduism there's, there's a, um, have you heard of Arya Samaj? Arya Samaj basically is a, is a, a, a thought, a religious kind of uh, thinking um, or practice rather where you believe in the in, in, in where you you don't worship sort of idols or images of gods 
you you believe you you worship the elements, and that's where they do the havan with the fire, and that, that's that's the most important part of the of the um, ceremony, the the use of the fire because fire is is a is, is a purifier. Um, so. So in terms of the gods like Shiva and Ganesh yes. that you use in your dance, yes. how deeply do you go into Hinduism? Uh, the way I teach it is I teach it from a story point of view. Firstly, because of my own um, my own personal uh, um, beliefs, as well as the f taking into consideration the fact that there are people, there be people in my class who may not be Hindu. I mean, the majority of them are, I think, but not everybody's a. a every see, young children aren't necessarily practicing Hinduism as say our parents or grandparents did. So it may not really mean very much to them. And I don't think belief is something that you, you can force upon somebody. So I treat them like stories. And if it is a devotional piece where you have to express devotion to say Lord Ganesha because he's the god of the dance, then then I try to explain to my students the um, that, that they are they are playing a character who is devoted to this god, or if it is a if it is a love if it is a love song between Radha and Krishna, you you you, you explain who the character is. That doesn't mean they have to feel that way, but they are. It is it is all about acting. It is about conveying. Abhinaya means to draw towards. Abhinaya is the act, uh, the art of acting or enacting a character. So that's uh, and to 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 uh, to be um, convincing in your role, you have to feel the part. So you have to become that character at that point. That doesn't mean that's what you believe in real life. That doesn't mean that's what you are in real life. You are becoming um, the character for that period of time. And that's how I treat it. I don't say to my students that, you know, the only thing that I, I, that I would say is, is religious or spiritual is, is the dedication or the devotion towards the art form, mm -hmm. towards the discipline of learning and the sincerity. Discipline, sincerity and devotion, you know, towards what you're doing. To me, that is religion. And it's, it's not about Hinduism and 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 a particular god or goddess i don't um, emphasize on that i emphasize on the spirituality of how you do things and the sincerity with which you do them for me that's religion how did you feel about that i don't agree with that we've never even talked about religion no, i think ever yeah, hardly it's 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 more like you say like the discipline and like of of it like when i, I remember when i first joined um First, it was like, and it was the standard you have to do pranam to your guru. It's like touching your feet, and I was like, the rebellious days I'm talking about now. I don't like her. Why do I need to touch her feet? I don't want to go near her. It was like the attitude I was at, but um, it was just that general mark of respect as well as um. um See, when you when you do pranam to a teacher, you are. What what you are doing is you sub you are it's a it's a form of sub submission um, to say I'm I am I am putting I'm entrusting myself in your care you look after me that's what I feel it means a teacher's responsibility is huge to guide the student in in the right way mm -hmm. and with full sincerity this there is a requirement for 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 sincerity loyalty truthfulness on both sides and a, a student's responsibility is to is to trust and put themselves at the mercy of the teacher more or less and it is the it is the, the teacher's responsibility to live up to that expectation so that is to me that is what the meaning of you know uh, um, touching the teacher's feet or falling at the teacher's feet it is, it is being submissive I am entrusting myself to you look after me. And we've learned all these like 
you know, it, it, it is, I mean, it's a big thing, but I mean, if you just look at it in like general day to day life, it's quite a, a little thing. But I'm so glad I've like learned all like extra knowledge that we've gained from, because even like stuff like general respect of your, yourself, like your bells, don't wear them into the toilet. That's the art form. It's don't put shoes on, don't put shoes on with them. Like, them, just, just and it's like if they fall on the floor, then I immediately, it's like these little, little things that I've learned from you that actually, I mean, I remember um, I went to a community show and um, there was this little girl with her, and she was doing Gatak, and um, she was doing, and she wore bells with her sh with shoes on. And I, I have a problem, if I see something, I just can't keep my mouth shut. I was like, excuse me, do you want to take your, your, your shoes off, please? And my friend was with me, she goes, you can't just tell a random girl to take her shoes. And I was like, no, and I was just like, look, and then I explained to her and I sat her down. I was like, look, this is the dance form that you're doing, you need to respect your bells. I was just like, the shoes that you walk on carry so much dirt and, and you know, it's not pure. I was just like, why do you want to, like, I was trying to explain to her and she was just like, I know my dad's doing, and then, bless her, she was like six and she goes, she was just like, but I need to go wee wee. And I was like, well, take your bells off then. <laughs> and, you know, then and she was just like, so I made her take her bells off and her mother just looked at me and, you know, I, I reckon... No, we see we be, we we believe that any place you dance, I mean, you're doing classical dance, Indian classical dance, any place you da perform or dance in, that place becomes like a temple. So it becomes a sacred place. And in Hinduism, a temple you don't wear shoes, shoes. into a temple. So if I was to choose to dance in my office here, you know, for that period of time it would become sacred, and I would leave my shoes outside. You know, it's it's um. It's to do with respecting from where it's come, mm. and that's the tradition it's come from. So I try to, I try to make my students understand. I think most of them do. I don't know. In terms of Hinduism, religion, and respect, I didn't have a lot of it before I started because, in our family, it's not a big thing. And I mean, like Divi said, when you do pranam, you're, you're giving her yourself, like so she knows that she can guide you. And I mean, I've learned a lot through my dance form and through Divi's guidance. Like, even now, I know that if I come to a crossroad where I don't know what is right, what is wrong, I can turn to Divi mm -hmm. and be like, Divi, this is my dilemma. I know this is what I've learned and this is what I'm feeling. And she she takes on that role and she will sit us down and she will, she will guide us through it. And that's what she's done with religion in the sense of telling us stories like she's I made us research it, it as well yeah it would be like she would be like oh we're learning this it's about lord ganesha and Bhagavad Gita, yeah. or just general things and she'd give us a hint and we'd go off and she'd ask us to research it come back with any questions and Lizzie would be there and she'd tell us these stories and the way she told them to us we felt it inside i mean that's a big part of being a dancer. If you can't feel it inside yourself, there's no point trying to portray it to other people. Like for that split second, if I'm playing a gobi who's dancing with Lord Krishna or telling him off, you've got to feel it mm. and you've got to believe it that that is what happened all those years and all those centuries ago. It is what happened. You can't be like, yeah, that's not realistic. It's not See, I was, uh, I was at that. I was like that. I'd be like, oh, this is like this is silly. I was like, I don't want to, you know, do something like because I didn't. It was like one of those things. It's like, how could this happen? I'm not a da 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 da. But I think when I did start to do dance like full time and I spent more time with Divi, I used to actually just watch her dance. And the one thing that is just so inspiring yeah. to me, like, it's like you know, if you did get Divi to do anything right now, she would be so deeply involved. And that's one thing that I would I admire about her so much that, and also. My expression is quite rubbish. Like my pure dance is a lot stronger than my um, Abhinaya, which it really is. Really? Yeah. My expression sucks. It's, it's really rubbish. Bad. It wasn't on the Iron Gate, How many? She trained hard for that. If you ask her to do it now, I can't do any. I I I I don't know why. I mean, I can feel it. The thing is, it's all in there, but it doesn't. It kind of just gets stuck here. It won't come out of the face. I can. I can. Pure dance wise, I can deal with like speed. I can, I'm, I know for a fact. It just depends on it, it's also what what you've been currently doing. You've been dancing pieces that are not Abhinaya pieces recently, yeah. and if you were to get back into it, you'd be fine. 
Is that do this together? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But see, also training, how do you remember? We've had, but, well, it makes me laugh now, I think. <laughs> With the stick. Oh Don't right. give this woman a stick and tell her <laughs> she, stick. She's but. just got to lift it up and just say your name and look at you and you're like... No, they were like, it would be, she'd ask me to, um, like, learn my Varnum. And I, and I think, looking back at it, she was well within our rights, considering the relationship we share. But, um... Do you want to say anything that she was on camera? <laughs> it's fine. It was, no, she was just, I was, I was, le I learned my Varnum, like, literally a year. It took me a year, no, it didn't take me a year, but... It was for a whole year I was learning this Varnum. I was bored of it. I just didn't, I was like, oh. And um, the reason why you, she, I know she got me to do it is because I, I had a problem smiling when I danced. Mm -hmm. Like, I, would, I didn't use to smile. It was just because I'd be concentrating on it so much. I'd be like, <laughs> I couldn't, like, smile. Like, like, it was that enjoyment was there, but you couldn't tell. Um, but anyway, there was, I made a few silly, stupid mistakes. And it was just like, you shameless girl, get out of my house. So I was like, Okay, I went to get up my house. You shame this guy. Why are you going? Come back. <laughs> it's like I think when it was just really funny. Like the moments that we share when Lily does like she's quite strict as she said, but um, if you like, I think it's that expectation that she does have um, because when she knows you can achieve it, and then the students make these stupid mistakes, and you know, even me, me at that point, I wanted to kick myself as well. It's just like, what the heck? Like, why am I? You know, you make stupid mistakes. We both become like that because when Didi asks us to take classes, and we see these little children, where we we were once them as well, and they make the tiniest mistakes, like their elbows a bit up, or that, and it's just it's like, like obvious mistakes. It you, I, you cringe. You're that. like, why are you doing that? You know, you shouldn't. But then at the back of the head, we're like, yeah, we we've do been that there. still. We can't say anything, but it's just. It's been put through us now, it's automatic. You see something out of place, it's like, no, no, put it down. A bit to the left. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then you just think to yourself, this is Diddy speaking, this isn't us, but it's what we I remember heard. hearing somebody's class recording. Me. Yeah, it was her. Oh, it was her. Somebody, because I let the, the children record in class, you know, so they've got, they've got something to practice with, um, audio recording. So I heard one of my students' class recordings, and I, have, I really couldn't figure out whether it, whether it was me, <laughs> but it was actually Bhakti screaming at them in exactly the same way that I, and our voice was not even similar, but she just sounded like me, even I couldn't recognize myself. I thought, oh my god, I'm creating a clone of myself, <laughs> this is awful, this is so scary. But it's, it, it's, I think one thing that I have learned is, from from Didi especially she's she's so hard on herself because it's almost like you're always pushing yourself to achieve a lot more than you actually can. The aim is always higher than average or normal, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something I've learned, whether it's in dance or in anything I do now in my life. I always feel that I can achieve a lot more than this. I'm always pushing myself to do something, and it's like my lifestyle at the moment. Is mad <laughs> thanks to Didi. It's like I would, I, I, I'd go to work from like eight till six. Then like next week, this is what it's going to be like. I'll have work from eight to six, and then from six thirty till nine thirty, there'll be the it. intensive week for the whole week, and I absolutely love it. You, you mean the dance classes? Right? In dance classes, yeah. yeah. And also um, on top of that, because I'm at uni, it's like uni work. It's like there's times when we've gone on tour, we've come back at like because we'll be coming back from, say, like, Plymouth or, like, Birmingham or wherever we're touring, come back at, like, you know, early hours of the morning and then I've got, like, work the next day. It's just, it's always continuously pushing myself. It's like, now if I have, like, a day off, I really don't know what to do. I, like, it's it's that. Let's go to Didi. She'll give you something. <laughs> Did you have any more questions you wanted us to Yeah, I just to want to actually know, I mean, it's a final thing. Um, a sense of fulfillment you must feel? How does that feel within you and what more are you looking forward to? For me personally? Mm. Okay. Based on your language from students mm. and what you've done already. Um, in terms of fulfillment, I, uh, if I go back to thinking about when I started to learn to dance, I mean I wasn't young, I was 13, which is considered quite old for, a, for classical dance training. And that was because I was um, between the ages of five and thirteen. I was my, my my family was living in Africa, so I didn't have an opportunity to learn. 
so when I, the, the minute we moved back to England, I um, the first thing I did was I, I wanted to, to learn to dance. And of course, it started off as a very casual hobby. And I, I don't think I ever imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing today. I've always been extremely academic. I've always been at school, the, you know, the perfect student who would always get nothing less than, you know, the top A's. And I was all set to do medicine. I was supposed to be a doctor. I should have been. I earned, earned a lot more money. <laughs> but um, it, it, was, it, was, it was never a, an issue with my, my parents. You know, Nina, go and study. Nina, go and do your homework. Never. I was always on top of everything. I was always doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Until one day, suddenly, I decided that I was going to just throw it all away and become a dancer. So... Um, and this was soon after my Arangetram. My Arangetram was like, I couldn't sleep that night. I and until then, it never occurred. There was never any possibility in my mind that I would be doing anything except medicine. On the night of my Arangetram, I didn't sleep all night. I was on such a high, and the next morning on such a low, because I just felt I don't know what I'm doing. And I thought, if I'm going to be a doctor. I will never be able to dance, there just won't be time. Because I'm not one to do something halfway. I want to do it like fully or not at all. I can't do in between. So I, I went through all these different changes. I thought, okay, I want to do medicine, but I am a science person. I'll do biochemistry or I'll do microbiology. Then it went to psychology. Then I ended up in SOAS um, doing some awful course called Art and Archaeology of South Asia which had nothing to do with my, my science background. <laughs> I thought it had something to do with dance because I thought there was going to be some something about temple sculptures and whatever. It was so boring, the course. I ended up always... I had to take a tube journey from South Harrow to Russell Square. And on the way came Barons Court, which was a stop for the Bhavan. So before Barons Court, I was should I, should I not, should I, should I not? And I would always get off and say... And then and turn up to, to to the bhavan to dance. So I was basically bunking. <laughs> Didn't go to university. Then one day decided that I wasn't going to go to, to university and I applied for the scholarship to go to India. And so I was too scared to tell my dad. I told my mom. I said, This is it, I've decided I'm gonna be a dancer. And you tell Papa, I'm not telling him. So she was terrified, it took her some days, she told him he didn't speak to me for months didn't speak to me at all for months. I, I really disappointed them because they never had to, they, they never said to me, be a doctor. They were happy with whatever I did because they thought she's so clever, she's going to do something academic, she's going to be a professional, she's going to be able to stand on her feet and look after herself. And then suddenly I wanted to be a dancer where there's no security, there's no nothing. So my dad didn't speak to me until the day before I was to take this flight to India and I'd never been away from home for even a day till then. I was I was 19. And I was, I was actually terrified, but I, I went and I spent two years in India and it was a very, very difficult time because um, I'd never been on my own, never been independent. And even though I was like miles away from my parents, I still did everything that I thought my parents would want me to do. Like my mother said, you have to drink half a pint of milk in the morning, half a pint of my milk at night. And I did it every single day because I was so good. <laughs> And, you know, I, when I came back, I thought to myself, I have to prove to my parents that this has not been a waste. And I must prove to them that I, ha I have not let them down. I, I have to make a success of it. So I thought the only way of making, ensuring some kind of a regular income is to have a dance school. And then I can use that to kind of like have my stability financially. And then I can do whatever artistic things I want to do for, for my own fulfillment as a dancer, you know, touring and... Touring and performing is always, financially, it is always a loss. So I set up the school to make sure that my parents could feel relieved that I had an income. And and um, and then I started doing my own artistic kind of creations and choreography and touring and everything. And yes, I do, I do feel that I have... Um, I, I, there are lots of frustrations, we all know about that in terms of the funding situations and the difficulties that people go to, uh, dancers go through financially. But I feel that I am really in a very um, 
in a lucky position because I have achieved so much more than a lot of people have and so much more than I thought I could. And you know, when I've been able to sort of train students to, to their level, to think that I could do that, it, it was it, it was just not imaginable for me when I start on this journey, even even after completing my own training in India and coming back here to start a school. I, I never imagined that I could do this. It 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 is it has been really um a very happy difficult but happy time.